Well, good morning, good morning. It is uh, a crisp morning. It is actually, was my grand, this is my grand, Grandpa John's birthday. And uh, yeah, good memories. Boy, he was a huge influence on a lot of people. And uh, <laughs> I had a message, a voice message. It's my grandmother texting me this morning. I had a voice message saved on my Verizon you know, inbox, and then as you would go and clean out your inbox every now and then, I'd, I'd forget, and I'd go to listen to it, and it was his voice <clears throat> talking to me, and I switched to freaking T-Mobile, which was a good move, because I didn't have, I really blame Verizon, their service was awful, but I forgot to save that message, and it was personal to me, and I always enjoyed hearing it. <laughs> Because I'd get emotional. And just a reminder that uh, no one is a self made man. There's no such thing as a self made man. Uh, it takes a lot of people to do this, to build, to build a man. So I am appreciative of my grandfather, which actually makes me appreciate my father in law and how much time he spent with my boys and spends with my boys. Because it has infinite value. You have no idea the influence that someone can have. So, um, I'm raising men, thanks to my father-in-law. And uh, anybody who knows my boys know this. And um, I don't think that's normal, by the way. I really, I don't think there's as many men being raised today as there was um, 50, 60 years ago. But yeah, it's a, you know, it's joy. Like my heart is full. I'm not sad. It's joy. My heart is full today. Anyways. Yeah. Um, I'm giving a tour this morning to our new bank. Um, kind of excited. Um, I'll tell you a story about banks. <laughs> um, seven years ago, I did my first bank deal and uh, a friend of mine described it as this or explained it like this because he was a part of the deal uh, he said Nate they should have never given you a loan and I'm thinking back it's like it's true but holy crap we've crushed it so they accidentally did the right thing and the bank that gave us a loan seven years ago uh, doesn't really want to participate in our growth plans um, so they've made the wrong decision twice. They made the wrong decision to give us a loan. And now they're making the wrong decision to not partner with us going forward. Isn't that interesting? Like you can accidentally do the right thing. So anyways, it's been two years of searching for a bank because I haven't had a relationship with a banker in seven years. Because two weeks after the loan was done, our, our lender... He uh, resigned and went into another career, which, hey, I don't begrudge anybody. Then, you know, you think about it a couple years later, COVID hit. It was just like, you know, and what I've noticed with, I don't even know if I should say it, but, uh, you know, the people that I've been dealing with, unfortunately, every day they go to work, I really think their goal is to not get fired. Like, if you go to work every day and your goal is to not get fired, like, that's not a career, man. Like, that's awful. Like, how can you feel like you fulfilled anything? I mean, you're going to get a retirement, a pension. But what did you do? Like, what did you do? What did you accomplish? You accomplished not getting fired. That's really, like, I feel bad for people that go to work every day and their whole goal is to not get fired. And it creates a whole, excuse me, host of things like bad culture. So when everybody's trying not to get fired, what happens is, is no one really does anything because you've gotten yelled at, like you're operating out of fear. And I know this is a bit of a tangent and I'll get to our new bank, but most of what I deal with as a business owner, one of the toughest things is when I hire somebody is dealing with their defense mechanisms that they've picked up from unhealthy work cultures and it takes a while like 
they spend their time trying not to get yelled at and not messing up because whoever they worked for in the past, bad leaders, bad managers, they would get yelled at if they messed up. So what it creates is a culture of not trying things. The only people that don't mess up are the ones that don't work. And messing up is what? That's called gaining experience. So it's just interesting. Like I look at how old the banking industry is and the culture that has been created over time. And then, by the way, like anytime I interact, like I wrote a check, I needed to pay myself back for something. And like the banks have so many rules and regulations, like I couldn't even access money from one account at another bank to an account, my personal account. And it was like all these rules and regulations, yet somehow, and I've been reimbursed for this, somebody was able to take a check right out of the mail and get it cash for like $27,000 and some stranger like in Brooklyn, New York. And it's interesting, like how does some stranger in Brooklyn, New York steal a check out of the mail, copy it, make something up and it gets through, you know, the system. And yet if I want to write a check to myself, it, it needed like so many days to clear because it wasn't enough funds in the account that I was writing the check to it, whatever, but it's a joke. Well, I mean, it's awful. It's just, it's awful. It's an awful industry. I don't. Yeah. I hate to say it like, yeah, I probably shouldn't say it, but it's been, you know, I started framing rejection letters. Um, I started it with my bourbon barrel aged maple syrup way back when I entered into the international maple syrup contest. I have framed, started framing rejection letters from banks. So just so you know, if you're a banker and you want to work through business with us, and if you eventually reject us, I'm going to frame it. And it, it's going to be, I have a wall of rejection and it's awesome. Like I love it. This is counterintuitive. Uh, what was the recent one? Oh, I applied to teach college at Penn State Shenango. Uh, they had a business, uh, kind of a business um, lecture position opening. And I always apply and um, certainly qualified to do it. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, they're, they're going to pass. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm probably not ready, meaning I have too much career stuff that I'm dealing with, young family. I'm probably not ready. Like my company, I'm still, you know, developing the leadership and I just don't currently have, um, I'm needed still, but I'm trying to work myself out of a job if that makes sense. So I can free myself up to teach undergraduates um, because I've been so influenced by some of the professors that I've had that I want to pay that forward. Um, entrepreneurship class always had a great professor, both in undergrad and grad school. Great entrepreneur uh, professors. Uh, professor Miller at Teal College, and I guess it's Dr. Pat Gaughan now, um, who's now at Akron, but at YSU. Um, you know, these are these were men that did the thing that they were teaching, and I, I think that's just missing, in, in especially at uh, the collegiate level. Like, well, not really. I mean, a lot of college professors teach. I know I'm rambling this morning a bit, but a lot of college professors own businesses, I should say. And, um, yeah, I think that's important because you are not taught in high school how to own a business. You are not taught in college how to own a business. You're taught to work for one. And it's different. And the education you get as far as owning a business comes from a lot of mistakes and, um, you know, messing up a lot and mentorship from other business owners. And there aren't universities and college out there that are teaching you how to own a business. They're teaching you how to be an employee and we need more business owners. We need more business in this country it provides jobs and a livable wage and opportunity. And, um, yeah, I think it's a little bit of a discussion this morning with myself. I'm going from, 
you know, follow Nate's train of thought. So, anyways, the bank that is coming in this morning uh, actually sees what we're doing. They actually bothered to listen and look at the numbers, and uh, they aren't operating out of fear. They're actually going, holy crap, uh, this company's going to be a powerhouse. It already is, and it's just going to keep growing, and, you know, we'd like to be a part of that, and good for you guys. I hope uh, I'm able to um, send referrals, and uh, at some point, I'll have more to discuss. I don't think a lot of people talk about their banking relationships on YouTube with their business, but uh, yeah, I, I think we actually have one with a brain. And I, you know, I say that with, you know, as much respect as I can. Uh, it's the institution itself that is jacked um, for the most part. In a lot of banks right now, they don't have money to lend. So that's kind of, whoa, like what's going on? But that's a whole other topic. Anyways, um, thanks for stopping in this morning. Listen to me ramble a little bit. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I've been thinking about. Uh, catch you at the end. Okay, we're trying something a little different. A little further away action here. Cleaning the coffee pot. It's kind of a cleaning day. Uh, we're rearranging some things. So you can see, like, our lab's getting moved to another temporary location until we finish our lab. So, finance office. Uh, Taylor's moving. This is going to be Brandy's office over here. Take you through. They've really been scrubbing and cleaning. Uh, let's go look at down here. we got a load of syrup, so I'll take you through and show you that. So we got a nice load right here from Georgia Mountain. This is all Vermont syrup for a customer that needs Vermont syrup. Uh, it's specced in. And Hannah is doing all sorts of testing to see where color is. And I don't know, are we doing some uh, checks on the uh, invert sugar? Yep. Cool. Is that what you're doing? Yep. Look at you. Little, we got all sorts of little scientists here now. So this is a load of... That's, what, 4,000 gallons. So that's 100 drums of Vermont syrup. This is an order getting ready to ship out. And then I'll show you a lot going on. We kind of needed a day just to catch up on our sanitation and cleaning. Barrels, drums, drum, drum washing day, huh, Kyle? So drum washing day. So I'll kind of show you how we do the drum washing. My old drum washer got replaced with a much simpler system, and that is they will boil hot water, run it through a pump, and there's a spray ball right there on the ground, and they will put the whirly gig up there, and that's how they do it. It's a lot better than lifting drums, keeping it low to the ground. So, looks like we're emptying some drums of Vermont syrup getting pumped up into a big craft kettle let me show you so that's our big craft kettle that'll all be a Vermont syrup it's gonna go into totes actually I have no idea what they're doing is this just condensation here That thing is loud, but it sure moves the syrup. Boom, let me get you a look at it. Woo! Right there, buddy. That's, that's nightmares right there. That's what nightmares are made of. So this is another blend right here. You guys blending something else? Okay, that's our circulation pump. That's basically circulating it. Mike's pumping syrup in. That thing's blending. Last game tonight, Mike. Last game. Last one for your daughter. I hope so. Nice shirt, by the way. Falcons. So... Kind of a just catch up. They can blend 40, 80,000 pounds. 
uh, you know, before noon with that two inch pump. Like, they can blend a lot of syrup quick. Uh, I highly recommend a two inch pump for sucking drums out. But you need a big air compressor. Let me go show you the air compressor. It's going to be kind of loud. And I'll, I might have to voice over. But you need an industrial air compressor to run these. You can't use these Ingersoll Rands. I mean, we started on this unit here. But we eventually had to go to the bigger Atlas Copcos. So it takes a lot of CFM to run those two horsepower pumps. So the guys have been really working hard. We're getting our sugar, sugar hoppers ready. And somebody came today to take all of our old, like we end up with pallets that no one wants like scrap pallets. So somebody's out here taking all of our scrap pallets. And Jody's mopped this whole place. Jody mopped, mopped one acre today. One acre Jody mopped. Our building is one acre. Let me get our floor scrubber working again. So this is Mike. Mike and I went to high school together. A long time. It's been a minute, and he's taken a lot of these pallets. What are you gonna do with them? I'm not sure yet. Storage well, problem. Thanks for taking them, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for taking them. About to give you a hand. I'm amazed at how fast they, they build up. If you look at this pile, like it seems like we just did this, Dean. It's amazing. An amazing facility here. Oh man, it was a lot of hard work. It's an overnight success story, 20 years in the making, Mike. I believe this. <laughs> so, place. That's where I sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Seriously, it's the only that's got a bed. Yeah. So, yeah, if I stay the night, that's where I stay. Oh, Lord. It's okay, though. I got showers inside. So, that's Mike Schwanker. Uh, it's probably been 25 years since I've seen that. About 25 years. So, yep. Kind of a, what do you call this? A clean up, catch up day? I mean, it's cleaning, moving, blending. blending. How many pounds are you blending today? About 45,000. Okay, 45,000 pounds. So basically, that load of drums that you saw at the beginning. That's 40,000 pounds, so he's blending a little bit more than a semi-truck load of syrup today. How much can you do in a day if you're really like... If I really push it, I think I can, we can do about 20,000. In a day? Yeah. Before noon? If everything's flowing, if everything's flowing right, there's no unfiltered or real deep, 80,000. 80,000 pounds. That's a lot of syrup in one day. So, thanks dude. Yep. So Benny, I think, is ready to go. He's running the, uh, the old cart around. I'll turn you around. Yep. What are you doing, dude? I'm saying I'm awesome while doing this. You're awesome? This is some cool. Watch. I don't know who teaches you these things. That's kind of a, a day, you know, it's Friday, last football game tonight, and uh, yeah, a lot going on, but uh, boy, this team really responds, so. This is our uh, blacktop roller, look at you, yeah, keep coming, buddy. It's actually, we'll see ya. That's all you got. That's interesting. Good. Dino's just rolling her right out, buddy. 
Aren't you curious? I am. I gotta step on this. It's still pretty soft, guys. Yeah, we'll get the compactor. You know we'll need it. Oh yeah. Will this stuff still compact after it sits for a couple days? I don't know, but I bet you there's a YouTube video that'll tell you. When I looked, I couldn't find mine. Not one? Nothing that was real helpful. I just think over time as it gets driven on it'll pack down. Just like just like in the plant, you know? So Benjamin and I, where are we going? Food. Lunch. Lunch. We're gonna try a new place in town. Um haven't been there yet, so we're gonna try it. Ben's hungry. It's been working hard. Yep. Wait, what? Been working hard? I had to lift a 41 pound box, which is right there. Yeah, you got the sugar in there for me? Yeah, I got the sugar. So Kyle's got the last of this order. You know, if you breathe really hard in here, it tastes sweet. Yeah. If you breathe in your mouth, it tastes like maple sugar. So how many cases you got left to complete the order? Uh, there's gonna be 11 right here. Absolutely. Good looking sugar, buddy. Good looking sugar. All cooked at 270 degrees Fahrenheit, so this will absolutely make moisture and water activity numbers. My wife's home. Play practice is over. She's doing the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. So if you are anywhere near the Sharpsville area, um, I highly recommend that you go see the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I'm not a fan of that particular show in general. Just never really appealed to me. But somehow my wife has actually made that show good like it's funny it's well done i promise you if you go to sharpsville the high school production of the legend of sleepy hollow you're gonna love it let me give you the dates that would be thursday the 26th there is no show on friday because there's a football game but also on uh friday the 27th or i'm sorry friday the 27th there is no show so it'll be thursday the 26th Saturday the 28th, this is October, and then Sunday the 29th. So those are the three nights for the shows. And if you can't make those, if you somehow know somebody, uh, Mrs. Bissell might let you come watch um, the, the dress rehearsal. And um, sometimes it's nice to have a live audience for the dress rehearsal. rehearsal. And I will be at that one on Wednesday. Look at all this. Did you help unload all this? Wow. So Hannah's checking all of the drums. Look at all this. She's like a little scientist. See this? Right there. She's checking the colors. So this is all coming from our friends at Georgia Mountain. This is a lot of syrup. How many drums did you get? 